Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. My name is Todd Muirhead, and today we're going to be talking with my good friend, Mark. Hey, great. Thanks, Todd. Uh, Mark Aktimachuk, everybody knows me as Mark A. I work in the performance engineering team, and uh, you might know me. I'm uh, kind of noteworthy out there because if you've ever looked and tried to figure out how to do cores per socket for a VM, likely you've come across one of my articles or a uh, fling that I was a co author of as well, too. So I want to talk about that today uh, as it relates to vSphere 8. Yeah, the cores per socket uh, question is probably one that has been. Uh, one of the more popular questions for years now, and I know that you, that you you personally have have written blogs and and like I said, been involved with the fling to to address it for for customers on a longer basis. And I think today is really exciting what we're talking about that's new in vSphere eight. Well, it's been a long time coming, so uh, let me pull up some information for everybody here. So when we talk about this, who hasn't thrown into Google here the fact that you're trying to match best performance with cores per socket? We all know that this V topology is really important. And there's been a lot of guidance in the past and it's been you know, problematic. And I'm proud to say you know, in vSphere 8, we've introduced a whole bunch of improvements around this space and wanna briefly kind of highlight them. So we'll talk about cores per socket, you know, what the UI looks like. I have some screenshots here and a neat feature, um, which is device awareness uh, with regards to vNuma now too. So what does it look like? So we go to create a new VM today under vSphere 8 and you can see the CPU topology you set the vCPU count and boom, assign it power on. We finally have that automation, which will boot the machine with its optimal topology based off of where we started automatically now. And that's an automatic default behavior. So no more having to worry about what I'm setting for vSockets and vCores and vNuma, but the system will do this for us automatically. Kind of what that looks like is, now, when we go to power on a VM, we take a look at the physical host it's going to boot from. And we see what CPU topology and NUMA topology there is. And we want it to match that as closely as possible. So we look at the physical cores per socket. We look at how many NUMA nodes there are. We look at the size of the VM you're asking for. And then we use that logic that says, optimally, we should have this many V sockets, this many V cores, and this many V NUMA nodes. And so all of those take into account how this VM's powered on. And then that topology will stay with that VM, uh, even as we move that around potentially between hosts for vMotion. But again, uh, we'll automatically take a look at it and make those decisions for you so you don't have to anymore. Yeah, this is this is really exciting. Just seeing that automatic setting in the, in the UI like that and in a simple way is, is really cool. And that's it, right? And then, you know, we've enhanced the UI here. We can see we have a new a CPU topology widget, which is going to show us how the VM was configured after that power on. So we can take a look at it. And, uh, you know, a, a little needling uh, thread here too. Uh, threads per core. Why are we documenting that? Maybe that's something else to talk about in the future one day too. But uh, great UI enhancements. And uh, here again, if we edit the settings of the machine, we now have a, a CPU topology roll down underneath the, the VM options, right? The advanced settings here where we can go through and do all the old fashioned stuff. We can set it ourselves uh, if we need to. And this is where we can do, you know, enable the CPU, uh, CPU hot plug. And new also here I wanted to point out is the fact that we can do this device alignment to the NUMA nodes. So this is a, a new feature we released with eight as well. And, you know, why is this important? Well, if we take one quick shot here and we look at uh, what the VM would see with regards to these uh, PCI bridges, we see that they're outside the VNUMA nodes uh, without this feature in this alignment. But if we actually assign uh, these, we can now see that the devices are NUMA aligned. And this is a really great feature because if we're talking about uh, you know, VMs with high IO rates, we can now align the VMXNet3 device driver right down to the physical adapter on a host, right? So that presentation allows the guest OS to make good decisions. It allows us to align it with the physical infrastructure. And that's you know, great for performance, both network and storage. Yeah, so this alignment is really key to getting that absolute best performance in those configurations that are really sensitive to these uh, these types of configurations. Exactly. And, you know, I will do a shout out that, you know, we all love vSphere 8. We're excited to get to it. We love that automated function. But for those, again, that may not get to vSphere 8 right away, um, to call out here the, the VMCO, our Virtual Machine Compute Optimizer fling. 
And again, this fling uh, allows you to search your environment and get the configurations you have and what they should be with, with regards to V topology. So it'll kind of document it and you can go and manually do it. This isn't something that automatically does it. Um, but if you wonder what the optimal configuration should be, this will help you in those pre vSphere 8 environments. And last, just wanted to come out here that uh, we at the shortly we're going to release a blog with a full performance review of all of the B topology functions. Uh, this is the link where it's going to be uh, released to. Uh, we're just waiting a few last edits before uh, publishing. So very excited to do that. And for a lot more information that I can provide in our quick video here today, uh, Valentin, uh, one of my peers in the support organization, and I did a presentation at VMware Explorer uh, that deep dives into a lot of these details. So uh, check out VMware Explorer's content catalog uh, for more information here. Well, very cool. I, I know that for the, the vTopology stuff, we tested with lots of different workloads, the performance of this. I did some of the testing with the uh, database and there was other uh, done as well. So I know that in the uh, becoming material that you mentioned, the blog will have some some great performance details. Anything else, Mark? I think that's it. I'm excited here that we're gonna make life easier for all of our customers. Uh, I thank all of my performance peers for helping push through this feature set and generate this data like you, Todd, and I'm very excited uh, for customer adoption and looking forward to your feedback. Uh, please let us know what you think, good, bad, and otherwise. Cheers. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really cool feature that people are gonna love. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks, everybody. And we will see you on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. Thanks, everybody.